Hello everybody, this video is on transformers. Faraday's law forms an important aspect in the understanding of how transformers work. By way of review, Faraday's law states that when a conductor experiences changes in magnetic flux, an EMF is induced in the conductor. Faraday's law can be demonstrated using the simple setup consisting of two coils sharing a common solid iron rod. The left coil is connected to a battery and the right coil is connected to a galvanometer, which measures the flow of current through the right coil. When the switch of the left coil is opened, there's no longer a current flowing through the coil. As a result, the magnetic field that was produced by the current flowing through the left coil now disappears. Since the right coil was adjacent to the magnetic field that was produced by the current in the left coil, a decrease in magnetic flux is experienced by the right coil, which by Faraday's law, induces an EMF. This EMF will then produce a current that will be detected by the galvanometer. An EMF is also induced in the right coil when the switch is closed again, as this would increase the magnetic flux felt by the right coil. However, in both cases, the current that's induced by the changing flux only flows momentarily and quickly disappears. This is because after the switch is either opened or closed, the current flowing through the coil either remains zero or a non-zero value, which results in a constant non-changing magnetic flux. According to Faraday's law, if there are no changes in flux, there will also be no EMF induced. Electromagnetic induction forms the basis of how transformers work. Let's first look at the structure of a transformer. A transformer consists of two sets of coils, primary and secondary coils and these coils share a common iron core. The iron core has two main roles. Firstly, it increases the magnitude of the magnetic field that's produced by the primary coil, and it also helps transmit the magnetic flux between the two sets of coils. We'll have a look at the iron core in further detail in a moment. The primary coil is connected to a alternating current or AC power supply. The AC supply causes changes in both the magnitude and the direction of current that's flowing through the primary coil. Now, recall that the magnitude of current flowing through the coils will determine the magnitude of the magnetic field it produces, and the direction of the current also determines the direction of the magnetic field. As shown by this graph, as the current changes with time in the primary coil, you can expect that the magnetic flux it produces also follows the same pattern with time. The magnetic flux produced by the current that's flowing through the primary coil is transmitted through the iron core to the secondary coil as shown. Since the current in the primary coil is alternating or AC, the changes in flux is felt by the secondary coil. And by Faraday's law, an EMF and current are therefore induced in the secondary coil. The relationship between EMF in the primary and secondary coil can be better understood using these graphs. The first graph shows you the change in EMF in the primary coil due to the AC power supply. And the second graph shows you how the EMF changes in the secondary coil. The EMF and current in the primary coil changes sinusoidally with time. That is, it follows the pattern of a sine function. At instances where there are no changes in EMF in the primary coil, there are also no changes in the magnetic flux produced by the AC in the primary coil. This will correspond to an EMF of zero in the secondary coil, because it is only when there are changes in flux an EMF is induced in the secondary coil. Using Faraday's law, we can also deduce that when the change in EMF and current in the primary coil is the greatest, in other words, when the EMF and current are changing the most quickly on the graph, this will lead to the greatest change in magnetic flux and thus the magnitude of the induced EMF in the secondary coil will also be the greatest. So on the first graph, which shows the EMF versus time, when the gradient of the graph is the steepest, this will correspond to the greatest rate of flux change that's felt by the secondary coil. And by Faraday's law, this will correspond to a induced EMF with the greatest magnitude. We often describe this relationship of EMF or current between the primary and secondary coils of a transformer as out of phase. Faraday's law also states that the magnitude of the EMF 
is proportional to the number of turns that the coils contain. Therefore, by changing the number of coil turns in each set of the coil, that is either the primary or the secondary coil, the magnitude of EMF can also be changed. The main function of a transformer is to change the voltage or the EMF during transmission of electrical energy. The ratio of the number of turns between the primary and the secondary coils is equal to the ratio of the voltage across the primary coil to the voltage across the secondary coil. In a mathematical form, this will give us the equation of MP divided by NS, the number of turns in the primary coil, divided by the number of turns in the secondary coil, equals to VP divided by VS, the voltage or EMF across the primary coil, divided by the voltage or EMF across the secondary coil. If there are more turns in the secondary coil, the voltage would be higher, in which case we refer to this as a step-up transformer. An illustration of a step-up transformer is shown here. As you can see, there are more turns in the secondary coil than compared to the primary coil. This will suggest that the voltage across the secondary coil will be higher than the voltage in the primary coil. If there are less turns in the secondary coil, the voltage will be lower, in which case we will refer to this transformer as a step-down transformer. Now, let's have a look at a simple calculation question involving transformers. A transformer has 200 turns in its primary coil, so this is NP, and 1000 turns in its secondary coils, so this is NS. The voltage in the primary coils is 50 volts. What would be the voltage in the secondary coil? So this requires us to use a simple transformer equation where the ratio of the primary turns to the secondary turns is equal to the voltage in the primary coil to the voltage in the secondary coil. MP is 200 turns, NS is 1000 turns. And this is equal to 50 volts, which is the primary voltage, divided by VS, and that is the voltage in the secondary coil. Rearranging the equation to make the secondary voltage a subject, we'll get 50 divided by 200 times by 1000. And this gives us the answer of 250 volts. It's worth mentioning that a limitation of transformers is that they cannot be used with DC power supply. DC standing for direct current. And this is usually what batteries will produce. Although switching on and off a DC power supply will produce a change in magnetic flux, which will in turn induce EMF and current in the secondary coil, this will only produce current that lasts momentarily. When the voltage or EMF in the primary coil goes from on to off, we have a decrease in flux. And this will induce EMF in the secondary coil. But as soon as the voltage in the primary coil becomes and remains zero, there's no longer a change in flux, and therefore there will be no EMF or voltage in the secondary coil. When the voltage in the primary coil is turned on, it goes from zero to a non-zero value, and this will give us an increase in magnetic flux. Consequently, we'll have an induced EMF in the secondary coil. But again, when the voltage in the primary coil remains constant, there's no longer a change in flux, and therefore the EMF or voltage in the secondary coil becomes zero again. So hopefully by looking at the two graphs, you can see that using a DC voltage power supply is not a feasible way of inducing EMF or voltage in the secondary coil of a transformer. We need to use alternating current, that is AC, as this will allow for continuously changing magnetic flux that's produced by the current in the primary coil, and then this, by Faraday's law, will induce EMF and a continuous current in a secondary coil. It is very important for you to remember and understand that transformers do not work with DC supply. We must always use AC, as this will allow for changing flux and continuous induced EMF and current in the secondary coil of the transformer. And this concludes the video on Introduction to Transformers.